What's up, guys? Your boys are back. I'm Ryan, my man, George. Yeah, we're saying, guys, how you living out there, man? Shout out to the free thinkers, man. Yeah. Have we ever covered Jack, Har Jack Harlow yet? I don't think so. Nah, it's interesting. I don't think we've done yeah. anything by Jack Harlow yet. Yeah, behind the scenes, man, I've, I've been I've been projecting this dude's whole career path, man, and I've been right <laughs> <laughs> since he started. I'm like, yep, yep, he, he, he's going to be Since he did that, what's Botman? Even before that, I heard some stuff from him. Yeah, I, I just knew it. I was like, yeah, he, he's the next he's the next marketable guy, man, that's going to make some moves. You know what I'm saying? So, good for him, man. I'm happy for him. Y'all blew us up on Def to Radio. Make sure you guys follow us up. Uh, follow us on Def to Radio. Yes, D-E-A-F. Number two radio is our new Instagram. It's no longer lost in Vegas. Mm -hmm. That's where we saw that this request was dominating at. That's yes, where the, the vast majority of our attention is going to be is really on Def to Radio. So, yep. thank you for everybody that uh, brought this to our attention. Let's get to it, man. This is yeah, Jack man. Harlow's new album, Come Home, The Kids Miss You. And then the name of this song is Church Hill Downs. Is that a street? Is what? that a, I don't know, area? Yeah, area, something like that. I don't know. You know, let us know. Yeah, let us know. Okay, man, let's get into it. Jack Harlow, Church Hill Downs, featuring Drake. So Very Drake. Sometimes when I sit back and really let it register, I did everything I said I would and said it first. <laughs> I mean, the world's in denial, but they all know what I'm headed for. We about to feed these youngins to the metaverse Meanwhile I'm over here just trying to pen a verse Cause I'm done being extra with the extroverts The label used to wonder how I'm supposed to stand next to Vert Probably never thought that I would get these legs to work I work hard but hard shit don't need no extra work That's why I show up in a sweatshirt and let it burn The world's mine, I just say fuck it, let it turn The girl's mine, I just say fuck it, have a turn The goats call me to the side like can we have a word I could've fronted but I did this shit how I prefer Okay, like that mm. I know I should be humble, but it's something I just haven't learned. Soon enough, I had to make these bad habits burn. Soon enough, we about to come and get the shit we earn. Yeah, okay. You not a fan now, but I remember when you used to be fanned out. I guess it when the whole world loves you, people only got one way to stand out. Mm -hmm. All that okay. time in the kitchen finally panned out. I put some flavor in the pot and took the bland out. I know my grandpa would have a heart attack if I pulled a hundred grand out. So I'm not gonna pull a hundred grand out. I'm hip hop, do you fully understand? I'm fully automatic with the jams and it don't jam. At the shows, I'm about to start handing out programs. Cause y'all need to get with the program. Okay. I'm a grown a ass man. Call me pops, fuck around and take your phone ass man. Everybody know Jack, but they don't know Jack, man. They just know I got the flows and the hoes and the packed out shows. Ain't too many cons when you playing with the pros. Except for how your life get exposed. But I make that sacrifice for the life that I chose I know in Toronto they got salt for the roads But school's closed in Kentucky So I like when it snowed The kids carry chopsticks Not for rice in the bowl Okay, what's up right there? Yeah. Let him rock a little bit Yeah, he was, he was, he, was, he, he had, had a couple lines. lines He I had agree. a couple lines in there, man I agree Fully automatic with the jams And they don't jam So I'm fully automatic with these jams I just hit you with another one Another one, another one Not DJ Khaled, but You know, Jack Harlow I'm hitting you with jams And they don't jam You know, they don't, they don't lock up like a gun jams, mm -hmm. they don't lock up. You know, I'm 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 nonstop with this shit. This sounds like a Drake song featuring Jack Harlow. This is Drake. It does. It God does. damn. The label used to wonder how I'm supposed to stand next to Vert. Probably never thought that I would get these legs to work. So I'm I'm assuming he's talking about Lil Uzi, Lil Uzi Vert. I don't know if he's on the same label, but stand next to Vert. They never thought that I would get these legs. Now I'm standing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm standing. Tulsa was a play on standing and you know stand next to Vert. Now I can stand next to him and I'm I'm mm -hmm. I'm, I'm standing up. I'm I'm holding my own. With little Uzi verse, so I like that. So you know, it's just showing showing people that you know, showing that his mm -hmm. label doubted him. His label just was like, I don't know, you know, probably was iffy, just like it is for most artists when they yep. first start out. Mm -hmm. So I like that line. He said the goats call me to the side, like, can we have a word? You know, you heating up out here. You know what I'm saying? You know, Drake, like, come here, Jack. For a yeah, yeah. Bit. Let me let, let me talk to you for a little, little bit. Let me take some of that hotness, man. You uh, know, that's how it goes. <laughs> he said I could have fronted, but I did this shit how I prefer. Yeah, dude. I really like that line because I think when I look at Jack Harlow, I feel like he could have he could have went super super ultra, just corny poppy. But I feel like he he's a, you know, I feel like I see hip hop in him. I feel like yeah, I see I hear you. him wanting to be respected and him wanting to be, mm -hmm. um, just have some sort of respect through, through the, from the core of the hip hop community. Yep. So he could have fronted and went the, the corny route, maybe did some electro pop shit. No disrespect to electro pop. <laughs> I'm disrespecting him. But you know what I mean. The ultra trendy mm -hmm. move that you would think a white rapper would take. He said, I could have fronted, but I went this way. You know what I'm saying? I, I kept it probably more on the urban side and stayed true to who I am. So I, I, yep. uh, I appreciated that line. You're not a fan now, but I remember when you used to be fanned out. He's all, but 
I'm guessing when the whole world loves you, people only got one way to stand out. Mm. <laughs> so the only way that you could even be relevant is to hate. Mm -hmm. That's the only way you could even be relevant. I thought that was a slick line. Yeah, man. That was hard. Ain't too many cons when you're playing with the pros. That was slick wordplay, mm -hmm. right? Pros yep. and cons, right? Mm -hmm. You know, there's not too many disadvantages when you're playing at a high level, right? Playing with the pros. You can use Drake as an example. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? But he said, except the sacrifices and everything that comes with it, which he's willing to take. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? For this life. <laughs> so I thought that was slick, but slick play on words. Jack has good wordplay. He plays with syllables well. I think he's, uh, you know, he's solid, man. Mm -hmm. All that time in the kitchen finally panned out. I put some flavor in the pot and took that bland out, you know? So he, he worked on his craft in the kitchen. I'm assuming the kitchen he's talking about is just in the lab. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if he's talking about the kitchen, the, the <laughs> other rap kitchen, you know, that we hear a lot of rap songs like cooking in the kitchen. But mm -hmm. like, you know, just working on his craft in the lab. It finally panned. He's a play on pans in the kitchen, panned mm -hmm. out. But it panned out. It worked out for him because he worked, he worked on his craft. So again, I'm, I'm just paying attention to the wordplay. Not sure how much how I feel about the beat at this point, but we gonna keep it going. I'm gonna keep letting the beat rock, and this is this is definitely Drake S. Yes, it so is. So maybe maybe when Drake comes on, um, you know, maybe he'll bring the beat alive a little bit. But the beat is, it ain't it ain't it ain't grabbing me like that right now. All right, man, let's get back to it. Ain't too many cons when you playing with the pros, except for how your life get exposed. But I make that sacrifice for the life that I chose. I know in Toronto they got salt for the roads, but schools closed in Kentucky, so I like when it snowed. The kids carry chopsticks, not for rice in a bowl. School counselors all know how their life is at home. Cold like the Minnesota Vikings at home. Before I met Drizzy, I knew he and I would get along. But it's hard to crack jokes when you really want advice. I mean, what's it like to touch gold every time you touch a mic, touching heights? No one gets to touch in life. Fucking right, young bachelor. What's a wife? Once in a lifetime, till I say I want it twice. One of a kind, know your everything is one of mine. Wanted posters with my face, they know who I'm wanted by. Mm. Yeah, that's a solid verse, man. He said, you everything. Yeah, everything? It's just one of mine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, every you, the girl that you you pine over that you in love with, man, mm -hmm. that's just one of them for me, man. That's just she's just part of my mm -hmm. concubine, man. <laughs> I like that. And he also mentions uh Drake here a little bit at the end here. He was like, Man, you know, he knew that he would get along with Drake, you know. He's all but it's hard to crack jokes when you really want advice. He's like, Man, every time you touch the, the, uh, the mic is like touching gold, basically, you know? And he was like me, reaching new heights that some people never even touch in life. So what I'm taking from that is maybe he has a, a mutual respect for Drake. And um, and when, when he got a chance to, to, you know, meet him and get to know him, it was almost like, yeah, I want to kind of just hang out and, and just, you know, bask in the moment. But, you know, I really need to get some game, though. Because, you know, every time you touch the mic, man, that shit's like gold. So you want to soak up some game, so to speak. You don't want to fuck up the vibe. You know? Because the vibe, they probably have a good rapport. You don't want to fuck up the vibe. Like, all right, man. Anyways, man, can you tell yeah, me yeah, yeah. what sort of writing drills do you do? Exactly, yeah. You know, what lawyers do you have? Like, you fucking a vibe up. You exactly, know? man. So he feels awkward. You know. So I, mean? I thought that that was a cool way to address that and still stay in the uh, flow in pocket of the song yeah. in the verse. I thought that was a solid verse. Yeah, from, uh, solid, Jack, man. man. I agree. All right, man, let's keep it going. Fucking right, young bachelor. What's a wife? Once in a lifetime, till I say I want it twice. One of a kind, know your everything is one of mine. Wanted posters with my face, they know who I'm wanted by. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's still something. Yeah. Cold hearts and heated floors, no parental guidance, I just see the voice. Therapy sessions, I'm in the waiting room reading Forbes. Abandonment issues I'm getting treated for How much water can I fit under the bridge Before it overflows My son's gotta learn that forgiveness is a lonely road The crib's on his wheel like motorhomes Niggas love to try and test us like they know what we own Chubb's got the magazine cover like Rolling Stone Cause we already know how they rock They throwing stones Whenever you getting bigger there's growing pains I got He came in like ether He came in like ether dude Like ether He was like man I'm about to just come in and body you know what I love about the first line though. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Cold hearts and heated floors. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just, he just set the stage beautifully, man. You know I'm in my mansion, man. You know I got heated floors, man. He's just flossing. It's, yeah. it's a flex. Yeah. The mansion. I'm assuming, I'm assuming the probably that Toronto mansion or something like that probably has uh -huh. floors all the way. But I'm just cold hearts though. Yeah. I'm cold hearts, right? <laughs> Setting the stage for what he's about to talk to. He's in therapy it looks like. I just like how he started that, man. We're going to break it down, but yeah. I like that. He killed it cuz I'm going to keep it a thousand when we heard uh I'm on one with him in uh future. I bang that. Don't get me wrong cuz I told you I would get back to you guys um and see if that bang in the whip. That shit bangs like a motherfucker. So I'm banging the hell out of that. 
but I wasn't too impressed with uh, this verse Drake's is already verse. better than that. Bro. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just get to the shits, man. This verse is already better than that shit. How much water can I fit under the bridge mm. before it overflows? How much bullshit can I take before the shit is just I, I, I'm, I'm just going to go straight ham on people? You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And I felt like that was a really smooth, um, intricate way because you call it water under a bridge, right? When when something bad happens to you in life and... and Let I, bygones be bygones. Yeah, right? you know, but how much can you take though? At some point, you know, you're going to Will Smith the situation, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, damn, Jada, how much shit can I take from your ass? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> 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 And then he said, my son's got to learn that forgiveness is a lonely road. Beautiful. That's the way he, he ended that. So it's almost, it goes, it ties into that uh, first line of uh, how much water till it, you know, how much shit under the bridge till it overflows, right? My son's got to learn that forgiveness is a lonely road. Like, you can forgive and forgive and just say, you know what, it's water under the bridge, man. It's water under the bridge. It's water under the bridge. But that's a lonely road because that's the path least traveled. Because most people get the smoke. And it's hard. And it's hard. Most people don't forgive. You know, and right. you got to realize that just because you forgive someone doesn't mean that that would be reciprocated. Right. So it's a lonely road. Not many people go down that road. And it's a it's a virtue to be able to do that. So I that's that that's was uh, that was super fucking dope. He's in therapy, you know, regarding abandonment issues. Because he said, I mean, no, no parental guidance. I just see divorce him and his, I mean, his mom and his dad. I believe they, they've, um, they've, I don't think they ever really were together. You know what I mean? For a while, I think they were always been sort of separated <laughs> since he was a kid. Yeah. So even at, even a, a super hip hop yeah. superstar making yeah. all this money, um, has issues. They have things that they have to deal with. They have mm -hmm. sort of traumas that they have to overcome. So I like that he's giving you a peek into, uh, you know, what's going on in his life. And then at the same time, barring us to death, barring everybody out. So yeah, fire so far. Let's get back to it. Mm -hmm. Niggas love to try and test us like they know what we on. Chubb's got a magazine cover like Rolling Stone. Cause we already know how they rock, they throwing stones. Whenever you getting bigger, there's growing pains. I got enough pull to make the city start throwing games. I'm out here making a mockery. I got my realtor out here playing Monopoly. How can I address you when you don't own property? They only finesse you when you don't move properly. Destined for the win, but you don't get a prize out of me. I'm destined for the top, but you can't get a rise out of me. 750 for the round canaries and they glittering. Man, you niggas drop trash, you littering. I'm over delivering to the point it's belittling. I mean, the PTSD non is triggering. Non stop. You niggas yeah. throwing trash, you man. Littering. You littering, man. Get that bullshit up out of here. You littering, man. You dropping trash. <laughs> you littering. <laughs> that was hard. He said his man Chubbs got the magazine covered like Rolling Stone. He's got the magazine covered. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The clip. He got the clips in the, in the you know. Got the, the ammunition. The, the ammunition. He got that covered. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like Rolling Stone. Rolling Stone's a magazine with, you know, uh -huh. covers of magazines. So that was a slick play. Because <laughs> we already know how they rock. <laughs> we already know how they rock. They throw throwing stones. stones. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I already know how you rock. What he means is I already know how you operate. Yeah. I know how you operate, man. You a hater. You know what I'm saying? You hating on me. You're throwing stones and most likely you're hiding your hands. You know, yeah. be throwing stones and hiding your hands. Mm -hmm. We already know how y'all rock. Y'all throwing stones. But we know mm -hmm. that y'all on some bullshit and y'all hating. So we got the magazine covered for all that. For all the haters, yep. we got the thing thing. You know what I'm saying? To take care of what we need to take care of is what he's saying. But that was a slick play with gun yeah. gun reference. We already rock. The old, the old adage throwing stones. But, you know. Basically talking about haters, that was crazy. Because when you're getting bigger, that there's growing pains. There's growing pains to this game, right? Because as you, the bigger you become, the more stones that are gonna be thrown at you, the more hate. You know, it was like that. We call that growing pains. That was so. And hard. that's the kind of growing pains I want, baby. Don't nobody hate on the homeless dude. <laughs> Don't nobody do that. You know what I'm saying? Nobody say, man, you know that motherfucker. He all homeless and shit. Ain't got no money and shit. Dirty and shit. Nobody did because that would just be cruel, right? But you always talk shit about the motherfucker that's my you rich bastard. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Motherfuckers, who needs a house that damn big? Don't worry about it, motherfucker. Speaking of that, <laughs> <laughs> speaking of that, of that hate because he fucking he fucking nailed the. Uh, you need to act on that. You know what I mean? The <laughs> hater in a movie, right? I don't like that shit. The belly, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna drop a dime on that mother. Anyway, so yeah, but speaking of that, I'm destined for the top, but you can't get a rise out of me. That was a slip. Yeah, Real words. Dude. I'm destined for the top, but mm -hmm. you have to rise to get to the yeah. top, right? That but was you hard, can't dude. get a rise out of me. So it's a play on rise. <laughs> you can't you can't get knock me off my square. You yep. can't you can't rattle me and take mm -hmm. me, get me out of character, even though. 
You know what I mean? I see you guys. Mm -hmm. I see y'all hating, but you ain't going to get a rise out of me, and I'm still destined for the top. The play on words, man, super slick. Nons, he was nonstop. Yes, he song. was. Right? Realtor out here playing yeah. Monopoly and shit. You know what I'm saying? My real, realtor like, man, which, which property you want to buy now? Yeah, I'll take that one. I'll take that one. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Boardwalk this, this and that. I'm over delivering. I'm over delivering to the point it's belittling. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just so successful, yep. it's almost unfair it's to the point where yep. I'm, like, I'm making y'all look bad. Look bad. It just feels yeah, bad. You know it's, what just, it's not even fair. <laughs> yeah, just barred up, man. Love this one. Let's keep it going. 750 for the round canaries and they glittering. Man, you niggas drop trash, you littering. I'm over delivering to the point it's belittling. I mean, the PTSD is triggering. The profit is sickening. The stones are shimmering. Came from the north, but I got hot as fuck, so ain't no shivering. Mm. Yeah. Lucky me, people that don't fuck with me are linking up with people that don't fuck with me to fuck with me. This shit is getting ugly. And every situation is transactional, and everything they're saying is irrational, and every way they're moving is promotional. Mm. Everybody's acting irreplaceable, it's like they ain't disposable. My urges for revenge are uncontrollable. I know we're getting older though. Yeah. But I gotta get a nigga back for that. It's non negotiable, it's not even debatable. I'm getting so rich, my music's not even relatable. I blow a head up, it's an inflatable. Baby blue G class, I feel like a kid again. Praying on my downfall, don't make you religious, man. All I hear is plug talk coming from middlemen. What? All I hear is Praying on my downfall, don't, don't make, make you religious, man. <laughs> mm. Plug talk coming from middlemen. Don't make you religious, so bad. Whatever you pray to, it, that that ain't coming true. You know that don't make you really. Whatever you want to call it, Allah. But one thing I want to touch before we get back to it, George, because uh, I think it links back to that Jack Harlow line when he said, "I knew Drake and I would get along." Um, you know, but you know, it's hard to crack jokes when when you really want advice. I want to reference that line again because Drake says here, "Lucky me, people that don't want to fuck with me are linking up with people that don't fuck with me just to fuck with me." He's all the shit's getting ugly. Every situation, it's transactional. You know, everything you're saying is irrational. And every way you're moving is promotional. The way you're moving is promotional. So I feel like that's links to that, that uh, Jack Harlow line. Because every time I would assume Drake meets somebody, whether they're in the industry or not, it's always transactional or promotional. So I feel like that was um, linking back to that Jack Harlow line. Like, dude, you really... You really want some advice, but you don't want to fuck up, like you said, fuck up the mood. You know, you're just trying to like, hey, man, just be cool, man. Yeah. Act like you've been here before. So I thought that was hard. Yeah, man. You know, everybody's, you know, to kind of to bounce off of that, man, everybody's acting irreplaceable. It's like they ain't disposable. Touching back on everything, every situation is transactional. It's all promotional. Like, acting like that could get you cut off easily. Yep. You know what I mean? You've gotten mm -hmm. very, very comfortable just looking at me like a lick. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Like, I could get, get you up out of here very quickly. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I could feel, I could feel him. Uh, just him recognizing what it is. It's a cold game, man. It's a cold game. Everybody's out for themselves, you know, and people take advantage. They deceive. They betray you. And I think this is just Drake just, uh, you know, giving us a peek into that, man. A lot of y'all requested this song when it was leaked, and we don't, just so you guys know for the record, we don't do leaks. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We just don't. We want to do the song when it's meant to be released. Yeah. That's just how we rock. So anytime a song is leaked, we're just not going to do it until it officially comes out. But in um, in some of those uh, requests on Instagram, you said that this is a Pusha T diss. And I don't know if this is what you're talking about right here. My urges for revenge are uncontrollable. I know we're getting older though, but I gotta get a dude back for that. It's non-negotiable. It's not even debatable. So I don't know if he, if you guys are thinking he's talking about push the T right there. Maybe there's more to mm -hmm. it as we go go down this, um, you know, as as we get further into the song. I'm just curious about that, but we'll we'll, we'll sit with it. I just wanted to point that out. Like I don't know if I. As of yet. Right, right, yeah, because I don't anything. know if that was clear. That yeah, was clear. Yeah, you know, and obviously we know that Drake's yeah. subliminal game. He's, he's off the Jay-Z tree. He has, his subliminal game is nasty. You know what I mean? You could, for, for the most part, you can mm -hmm. read between lines and know what he's talking about. So we'll, I'll keep an eye on that. I'm getting so rich that my music is not even relatable. I'm getting so rich that my music don't even relate to the average person right now, which is probably what causes more hate. A lot of people said that about Jay, Ryan. You know what I'm saying? And when he started talking about art and shit and Basquiat, yeah. people were like, what the fuck is he talking about? <laughs> so, Drake is reaching, has reached, yeah, you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm that level. Let's keep it going. But I gotta get a nigga back for that. It's not negotiable it it's not even debatable. I'm getting so rich, my music's not even relatable. I blow a head up, it's an inflatable. Baby blue G class, I feel like a kid again. Praying on my downfall, don't make you religious, man. All I hear is plug talk coming from middlemen. All I hear is tall tales coming from little men. When I say bitch, I'm very rarely referring to women. Most of the bitches I know are niggas, they not even women. I know that sounds like I'm being funny, I'm not even kidding. Same ones that say they run a game when they not even in it. To be honest, y'all financial situation is my biggest motivation. And how you should take that statement is based on what you're making. 
Whips and chains like a dominatrix. If I see, I spit in your faces. Daytonas with the green faces. Kentucky Derby races. My presence in the spot is so abrasive. Box at the Churchill Downs. That's motivation. Yeah. And shorty, like, you know that boy Jack is going places. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I know we going places. That's why I'm on the song. All right. You know what I love about Drake, man? He sets the tone with the verse of what he's saying, and it's hard. And then I feel like he ends that verse on a knockout blow. You know, I feel like it's a buildup. It's a build up. Like, I feel like he, he catches momentum. Um, a good example would be that uh, seeing green. The way he started that, he mm -hmm. came in hard, and then he's all, it's not a facade, it's not um, it's not a dodge. I mean, he just mm -hmm. just kind of built that shit mm -hmm. up. You're like, golly, and that's kind of how I felt like what he was doing here. He was like, man, after that praying on my downfall, don't make you religious. He was like, all I hear is plug talk coming from middlemen. All I hear is all this big money talk coming from motherfuckers that ain't got it like that. All I hear is tall tales coming from little men. But that pocket, to your point, Ryan, when you when you said the all, all when we're talking when you reference seeing green, which I think is a great example, all them shits is a da 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 da. When you were breaking that line down, all I hear is talk plug talk coming from a middle man. All I hear is tall tales coming from little man. Yep. Mm -hmm. La 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 la. So he gets you into a groove with yeah. him, and he's talking. So yep. yeah, I agree. That pocket that he was in though was super super hard. And then when I say bitches, that I'm rarely talking about women. I'm talking about you, dude. To be honest. Y'all financial situation is my biggest motivation. This line was. And how you, you should be taking the statement is based on the money you're making. That was such a crazy. You're making a lot of money. It's motivation, right? The only people that's hurt by that statement is the motherfuckers that ain't making no money. It's insulting. This <laughs> is what it is. <laughs> if you know, so how you take that statement, it could hurt your feelings. Or you could be, it could be a compliment to you. If you're making money, it's a compliment because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm motivated by the amount of money you're making. If you're not making money, then I don't ever want to, ever want to be broke again like this motherfucker. Yeah. So it's <laughs> insulting to someone that's not making the money. Super hard line right there. Whips and chains is like dominatrix. It's like yeah. whips. I got cars yeah. and chains. You know, yeah, that's I'm a hip hop. That's a hip thing. <laughs> about 8,000 times that's been said in hip hop. The PTSD is triggering. He's all the profit is sickening. What I think he means by that is he, he didn't always have money. He didn't always live the life that he's living right now. So the, PS, uh, the PTSD, excuse me, is triggering. That's what keeps me on the grind. Going back to that, all I hear is plug talk coming from middlemen. All I hear is tall tales coming from little men, right? Um, <laughs> hmm. Then he says Daytona's with the green faces. Okay. So when he, when he said that, when we were listening to it, I don't know if you saw me and Ryan's face. He said Daytona's. When he said that, yeah. me and Ryan were like, oh, that okay. could be where it was. Maybe, maybe yeah. that's sort of a, uh, a a little bit of a dig at Pusha T because he had his album. The album Pusha T's album was called Daytona. And um, with the green faces, which I mean, to me, when you think of green, you think of envy, envious, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Jealousy, right? So, and also I think he's talking about a watch, you know, with the green faces. Yeah. So it's a double, it's a, it's a, a, a double entendre, or it's a metaphor there. Daytona's with the green faces. So, um, you know, here's my thing, man. I'm going to touch some of these lines. I'm going to take a quick, a little bit of a detour. If he's talking about Pusha T, let's just say, let's just, let's, uh, you know. Indulge that a little bit. speculate just a little bit. <laughs> if he's talking about Pusha T, because he said, I, I got to get a dude back for that, right? He said, I got to get him back for that. He said, my thirst for revenge is uncontrollable. It's non-negotiable. You know what I'm saying? It's not even debatable. Like, to, that to me sounds like it's inevitable. Like, at, I'm going to get him back at in some, some, way, shape in or some form. way, shape or form, yeah. in some capacity. Again, could be somebody else, could be some street shit, could be some other dude in the industry, assuming it's Pusha T. I think the best way for Drake to do this, man, and I want y'all to book it, you know what I'm saying? Give me my credit. I need three minutes, three rounds on Smack URL. Back. I want to see him battle three minutes, three rounds. I think if Drake says, Pusha, I challenge you. Drake, the biggest artist in the game. I challenge you to three minutes, three rounds on Smack Your World. For those of you who don't know, that's a battle league. Mm -hmm. That's a battle league. And we do a pay-per-view or whatever the case may be. I challenge you. Now, will Pusha accept that? Probably not. But I think it's almost like someone calling you out and saying, you know what, man? Let's just square up, man. I, I will beat the shit out of you. <laughs> I just want to fight you head up. And you the bigger artist. You, Pusha T, have everything to gain. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? So for me to call you out and I have more to lose than you... I mean, for you to turn that down, you would look crazy. So it would put Pusha T, I think, in, a, in an interesting position because if he turned it down like I already bodied that dude, it would look like he was kind of soft. You know what I mean? This is coming from somebody. We love Pusha, by the yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. We just want to see a great battle. 
it would look like, oh, he's how how could you turn down a Drake battle? You nicer than him, right? Oh, he's just an uh, R&B yep. singing dude, right? He challenged you as a man. He challenged your pen. And he's the biggest artist in the world. How do you turn that down? Yeah. It, it's it's you you have everything to gain, right? Mm -hmm. So I think it would put Pusha T, it would put pressure on Pusha T, and I think it would give Drake the opportunity. Now he would have to win. You know what I'm saying? He can't take the battle and get by. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He can't that, get that would backfire like yeah, a like, like damn. That, that now you really just now you need to retire. And I think under those circumstances, man, I think a lot of y'all would be surprised, man. I know, I know we hate Drake. I know it's cool to hate Drake, but Drake is barred up. Yeah, he is, dude. He's barred up, man. And I just and that duppy, go back and listen to that duppy. The bars. Well, back to back, he yeah. was lining Pusha T up. It's just that Pusha T had that ace in the hole. But do you have a whole bunch of aces in the hole to sustain yeah. three minutes, three <laughs> rounds, though, to match bar for bar? I'm telling you. Because that way we can really see who's really rapping, rapping. Yep. I think they're both great. I think it'd be a great battle. That's just something I'm putting out to the world, man. I think that that's something that Drake could use. Like, yeah, that could be a certain, I hear you. That could be a nasty chess move. <laughs> three minutes. You know what, Pusha T? I challenge Pusha Just tweet it. I challenge Pusha T to a, a battle on Smack URL because he fucks with Drake, fucks with battle rap. Yeah. Three minutes, three rounds, my G. Now what? That would be great, though. I would love to see that shit. But back to the line, though. All I hear is uh, plug talk coming from middleman. Pusha T literally did say that he was more of a middleman when we were just doing the right. shot. Go check out our Brambleton videos, Neck and Wrist. Yep. Uh, uh, just so you remember the videos, we just put out all awesome songs, mm -hmm. Love Pusha. But he did pretty much say that he was more of a middleman. He wasn't really the guy guy. He looked up to the dude. Right. That was the guy that kind of betrayed him. But he wasn't a guy guy. So there is a little bit of, if he's talking it's about pushing the window there, yeah. There's a little validity, is what I'm saying to oh, that. Okay. I mean, so right. I mean that, that, that's what if he's talking about pushing T. But if I had to be picky, and this is something that Jack did in, in his verse as well, I think it's this sort of um overdefining of what he's trying to do. When I say itch, you know, the be a silent. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm very rarely referring to women. Most of these itches I know are uh, are dudes, they're not even women. I know that sounds like I'm being funny, I'm not even kidding. That to me was just, it was just, it, it took away from the slickness of the line. Yeah. Over defining it. Yeah. And Drake does that sometimes. And I feel like people, when they see that, I feel like they're like, oh, he ain't going in because it's an amateur move. Even though he's a great yeah. writer. Yeah. You don't need to just let it breathe. When I say, when I say, well, fuck it, bitch. When I say bitch, I'm very rarely referring to women. That's it. Yeah. They, we know what you're talking yep. about. Mm -hmm. We talk about dudes. Dudes act like bitches is what you're saying. Yep. And then go down to same ones that say they run the game when they're not even in it. Yeah. He just skipped all yep. that filler shit. Exactly. He does that sometimes. And I'm just like, dude, you don't need to over define what you're trying to do. We get the slick talk. The people who understand bars like that, most of you guys do. I know you mm -hmm. do. You don't need to over define it. It just, it, it takes away from. From the how from, clever, yeah, how clever the line is, yeah. You know, and, I agree with and that. Jack did that up here as well. I know we're extending this video. Some of this shit may be cut out anyway, but Jack did that uh, up here as well. He said, "I know my grandpa would have a heart attack if I pulled a hundred grand out." Done. Not. Yep. Oh, so I'm not gonna pull a hundred grand out. Like, yeah, it's just unnecessary. Yep. We don't these unnecessary like filler like lines that try to make sure. You get, you get, you get the, the line. line. Takes me, away from the line. It takes away from the line. Yeah, man. I, I think, agree with that and too. I, and the only reason I mention that, I know that sounds nitpicky, but the only reason I'm mentioning that is that Drake does that quite a bit. He'll just, he'll, it's it's the in-between innuendos that he's saying, which he's amazing at. Yeah. And sometimes he overly defines the shit. And if motherfuckers don't get it, then it just wasn't for them to get it. Yeah, yeah. That's what I would say. Yeah, don't you spoon feed <laughs> Don't, But don't spoon feed your audience like these lines because it's an amateur move for people who don't typically know how to rap like that. They feel like they have to overdefine it. Yeah. So that's just, for someone as great as Drake, pen wise, I just don't like that. And I and I see Jack following in his footsteps, man. So none of y'all, both of y'all, man, don't do that shit. <laughs> <laughs> the stones are shimmering, came from the North, but I got hot as fuck, so you know ain't no shivering. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I came from the North, came from Canada, came down to the to the States, came down to, you know, the, the to the industry, so to speak, man. And I got hot, so you know, I ain't shivering. Ain't shivering. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Even though I came from the North, right? That was slick. From a lyrical standpoint of what was actually being said from both artists, I like that a lot. I can't wait to get into uh, more of his album. You know what? Give us some suggestions of other songs maybe off the album that we should hit. For me, it's not playlist, but they got busy though. Really, really love Drake's verse, man. Drake went so crazy on that verse, seriously. I think he should just rap. Just rap. I said this before. Just rap very well, consistently. All rap. You know what I'm saying? Maybe with an R&B chorus here and there, but rap. You know what I'm saying? And he stays on this level and he stays focused like this. Um, I, I don't see why he can't drop a classic, but I just think he needs to be focused on just being mm -hmm. great. Yeah. You know, so uh, I think that's the last last uh, chapter in his book, man. And we could just, you know, that's it. You Sign, know? seal, deliver. Yeah, that, it, ain't, it ain't much <laughs> anybody can say at that point, man. Uh, the beat, uh, it's one of those beats, man, that that's probably not the best for reactions. You know what I mean? So I'm going to let it, I'm going to sit with the beat to see. Seems like it's a late night cruising type beat. 
not really meant to be banged. Just just mm -hmm. the cruise too. Yep. So I'm gonna see how it sounds. I'm not in love with it right now after hearing that, but we'll see. You know what I mean? But Drake's verse was crazy, and Jack did pretty well. He did pretty well. He had a solid verse, man. So give us some other uh, suggestions off the album. That's the end of the video. If you guys enjoyed that, please hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. I'm George. That's Ryan. Las Vegas. We, we out. out.